take a moment and discuss Thai as far as art is concerned. And I want the public to understand the question is a valid question. How long does something take? How long does it take to ask yourself any question? How long something takes? Um, not to get, I'm not going to waste too much time, but I wanted to say that the answer um, is more of, it, it, the answer to that lies more in the story of each of the pieces. If I could say it quickly, I would say I've had a painting happen in six hours and I have taken as long as one year to complete a finished piece. Now, what determines that? It's the piece that determines that. It's not my will of what I want the piece to do. When, when the magic is happening, when the flows are occurring, when the art and the magic, the paint and the brush in your imagination in such an incredible space, time and what you're working in, it really changes and it's not available for you anymore. It becomes something different. And the process that you work with your pieces, for example, the piece that took a year, it wasn't about a year that it took me to do that piece. It was the work that had to go into that piece. The physical, just pounding of paint, the, the, the development of layers and layers and layers that just couldn't find their way. And the colors just were never working and you can't quit, you can't give up because you're building texture. You're staying totally committed to the process and you're trying to, and effort and everything you have to push yourself in this piece to a point where finally the piece becomes just just radiant and beautiful and, and just like, like I mean there's not like one more just even one brush hair of a paint that can go on a piece think how incredible that is all the layers all the paint until it comes down to that final moment Love and war. Love and war. What a name for peace. Especially a name of fellow peace. Yeah. Love and war. Let me talk about that piece for a few minutes. It's the size of it, of course, six by seven. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting piece. It's still, to me, it's a very fascinating piece. How it developed, unfolded, uh, the drama, really, the, the way this piece just uh, really kept picking one direction, which was just big gestural movements. Big, you know, big bold colors, certainly reds and blacks on the same surface, looking together, separating those colors with tannins and buff titaniums and using them directly out of the two, but I'm just putting myself in the space with Love and War because it was, it was the kind of piece that really introduced me to the magic, like the real magic of the art. When I was working on that piece, I was finding it just really easy to keep the strokes just work the piece from one side to the other. And as I was doing this, I found it easier to really rotate the piece and bring it to a, a point where it was seven feet this way and six feet that way. It gave me a, really the, the space to be able to reach and to work on it and be able to cover. And as I began to just move, as you see it, it's been to move the, the paint move it throughout the whole canvas, coming from one side to the other, from the top to the bottom. It was 
they were very clear that the piece was very, very free early on. It did not have a lot of, you know, complications in it. It wasn't a piece that was, you know, um, you know, trying to find a lot of paint on it. It was really a piece that was just finding just, just real interesting variations of red, also variations of black into the grays, um, really interesting mustard colors that were at times just very faint. And again, these color combinations weren't something that were chosen, they just began to happen on the surface of the canvas, began to show themselves in a way that were really working together. But as this piece began to develop, excuse me, it began to get more intense very really quickly. And I began to swing the piece back and forth, from one side to the other. It's really big, stronger strides, longer lines from top to bottom, really flowing that line and bending it back around again. Really needed it to stay on the surface of the canvas. Sometimes I wanted to move off the surface of the canvas, but then it would be brought right back in as that both hands began to work on the piece. And both, you know, both the piece and myself began to just really, really just you know find our way. I came to this moment with love and war, which I still didn't know the name of yet. I still wasn't even close to naming. I was only just painting and working it. And this very really fascinating. Moment. I went to grab the piece and I rotated it. And as I rotated this piece, I rotated it back to a vertical position where it was seven feet high and it was six feet deep from side to side. And I have to tell you, that's something that was on the people that I've been as an artist, creating a piece of artwork, finding two very physical human forms in this piece embracing from the bottom middle part of the canvas, pushing itself up and through it and embracing towards the top, the top part of the piece. It was so interesting because the way the piece was developing and where I was painting it from and to turn it to have such a clear understanding, like almost absolutely like this was what I, I'm going to be is where I looked at it and I paused and I just stood there. Yourself. Just powerful presentations of two strong, very just determined individuals, both in size and strength and definition, but also the, just how they were both looking at each other, both of them with their heads turned, almost in a moment of just either pure love or pure war. And there that moment was, and it existed. It was right in front of me. something like this could just happen without really it's not the understanding of what you were doing it's actually the experience of what was taking place with the piece and really the magic of the art happening right there on the canvas with your brushes and your things your tools working from side to side on this big massive space And as I saw those two figures, I saw them in person. I called them to kill each other. Because both of those proximities, life and death, happen in those ways. And it came love and more. And she's a beautiful and strong. She's a passionate piece. Every time I see her, I'd like to look at it. You know, give her a wink, and we both smile. So the work itself always, in every story of the canvas, whether it's, you know, working the piece and discovering things or like an Adirondack morning, um, you know, that's the piece where I discovered the accident. The accident, well, when this one thing's happened if you're planned, which of course is how I work all the time. It's not a, it's not an understanding. It's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. It's more of a, all right, let's go. Let's go to work. Let's start putting data on this. And at around that morning, I discovered what most artists and people say is those unexpected happenings. Whether it's something lands on the canvas, something falls, something changes, something, again, affects the canvas in a way that's outside of your control. And that's what Adirondack morning represents to me.
is the pure accident of me working on multiple pieces at one time. Quickly, you know, I'll tell you the background, it was in the Hebrew page before, eight months, I was very comfortable in my space. I was really clear about the work, where certain pieces were going. I was also very clear that there were other pieces that I did not need to have any idea about where they were going, but I continued to paint. Brought a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of feeling to them, a lot, a lot, a lot. At one point, as I began to move through my studio, I began to be very, very caught up in the moment and the movement of plank. And again, multiple pieces were up and moving. Lots of paint was on the canvases. Lots of wet paint mixing together. Not worrying about being you know, too compelled to limit the amount of pieces that were willing to get up and running. You can do 20 pieces of art and running at once. And what I mean by that, I'll, someday I'll show you. That's how the conversation's going. As I began to back away from this piece, moving rather quickly, I had tables set up in there, and all those tables are paint, you know, tubes of paint, cords of paint, gallons of paint. But there are often in spaces and, and areas where they don't interrupt me when I'm flowing, when I'm moving, because I'm not paying attention to what's behind me on the side and I'm going just instinctually making choices, moving to another piece, almost in a ballet. And it's natural. And it's your movement. And I push back up against the table and the whole thing just collapses. And on top of that, we're chalks, materials, and a gallon of blue. And that gallon of blue that you see on that canvas there, on Adirondack morning, that blue came straight out of the can. There it was. It was mystic, five bucks. It was to be just put on as texture. It was to be put on to develop the canvas. It was just put on not to have any serious meaning, really, really any importance. It was just a $5 gallon of paint. That's all it was. It didn't turn itself into a million dollar game. Because that thing fell and the game tumbled down and the lid. Because that was all it was. It was landing on the canvas on the ground, splashing over what I considered to be the whole surface, although it wasn't. The moment of, oh, shit. Unexpected, not planned, didn't need it to happen. <laughs> it wasn't what I was wanting to juggle. I was involved in so many paintings and such a wonderful flow and space and imagination that it just stopped. And the surge of power of push and just, just no just willed me into grabbing whatever I could the biggest, the flattest, the widest knife I could grab. And, and it was in just it was about that wide. And I just began to clear. I began to literally just clear the paint. And the first stroke that I made immediately introduced all that under, other color under me that clear, that possible, that accidental, and it was, and it was all of a sudden, and that magic was there, just flooding the surface of that canvas, pushing it both uh, uh, on the ground, up as far as I could one way, as far as I could the other way, pulling it. Pushing it, getting it off, putting it in areas, letting it cool itself. And again, bringing brushes in to brush through the blue. Brush through the blue. Into the green. Into the, 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 the reddish kind of, again, mustardy tones. The, the organic side of nature, just raw and just, just, just rugged and, and, and ridgy. And the paint, just blue paint, just not able to stay on the surface of that of that canvas. It's almost as if that paint just was like, get out of this. You're not welcome. And it's like, the no, canvas is full. And the paint was blue on the paint. And this last stroke actually happened. And there it was, just covered in sweat, out of breath, 
completely just not only recovered, but discovered the peace in that moment. She was done. And had a one that moment was born. And it really was. She was wrong. And it's such a... It's like a surprise, too, when you think about most of your work is spontaneous. And it's, it's, it's unnecessary to know. It's the imagination. It's such a very important possibility to be truly honest with yourself. Peace itself now, even today, even when I look at it like some love and war and other pieces, like, for example, Vivaldi would understand, which that is another piece that just, again, over weeks and weeks of pain, just, just drama and, 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 and fighting and, and not liking what was happening and not discussing the part of the piece that was like, you know, not expressing itself. The whole piece was just not wanting to have it very, very much to it. And it finally reached a point with the with, with body would understand that I just said, enough. I was ready. I grabbed turquoise, as many turquoises as I could. I grabbed as many yellows as I could. I grabbed white, I grabbed gold, I grabbed silver, I grabbed bronze, and I put it immediately all right there, right all in front of me. I took that canvas and I just laid it on the ground. And I grabbed six brushes. understand this so you're looking at this piece you can understand what was actually going to happen. I pulled myself back and I knew because I had heard at times of all these four seasons and I wanted to at times time the strings of the violins and where it was reaching me when I was listening to you know, that music and I knew there was so much magic in that it's just so much power and where he was at when he was composing. And as it always lifted my spirit in these really wonderful world spaces, I chose to put the body in to accompany me as a poet through this process. And once that music started, and once that paper went to just across that canvas, it was very, very clear that this was going to find its way. Look at those strokes, please understand. It was all about moving forward, moving the paint forward, moving the paint forward. And every stroke that I took, I never went back. Everything that you see in that piece is unrehearsed, uh, no idea, desire. Feeling. Push yourself beyond what you know into a space that you might completely succeed or completely fail. And as the piece just kept going and unfolding, she gave you the strength and this understanding and knowing that, you know, I don't know where it comes from. It's again, it's a very powerful and wonderful feeling, but the creative process is just glowing and flowing. And the work itself is what is the most honest part of the story. Because it came from such an unusual place. The relationship and the partnership that I created that piece with. And bringing Vivaldi in. And his music having a tremendous effect on it. With the energy and feeling. And the strokes of the brush. And just the combinations of paint. And how never one of those combinations of brush strokes ever killed the other colors. They all beautifully work together and the piece truly composed itself. The Baldi would understand and he did and so did I. And that's where that magic comes from. So it goes, it goes on and on. These pieces have these incredible stories. You know, you know. Just wanted to know. Simple as that. It's very common too. Uh, as, as an artist in the studio, in these spaces, pushing it. And the space itself, when I created those three and built in a stretch of a primer and laid them out, I immediately just I grabbed every bright, pretty color I could find. 
I had to spend the next few weeks just painting beautiful color. Just color after color after color. That's never ended. And it was so much fun. No matter where I was in certain pieces, I had the three graces, which I ended up painting it, just over there off to the side. Just, you know, hey, you want to take a walk in the park? You want to have some fun? You know? You know, you want to take a dip? Yeah. You want to, like, you know, you know, go for a glass of wine? And that's what the three graces was so much fun. She just, beautiful paint, just lovely experience. Of course, coming back with the white on it, of course, how she of course came about, and it's a feeling that she really has too, you know, to her, it's a bit gentle and very soft and very loving. And, you know, she wants to be next to the water, she wants to be next to the light. She, you know, she's, she's, she's a very safe and, and you know, just a, just a very kind of clever, good little painter. I'm very happy with it in my life. Just having a very hard time giving her up. For a few people that have cool. I haven't wanted her, but I've you know, one couple wanted to separate them and they're like sisters. You can't do that. I wish you could, but I don't want to. But that's that's it's a three races. Walking into your studio, you know, setting a cup of coffee down, just grabbing your paints, and you know where you are, and you're just stunned. And that's what I was waiting to learn. And that moment showed itself to me. And that's what I went and did. And I grabbed that whole bicycle to my lid, which is, of course, how this happens. And I grabbed that lid, and I popped that lid on, and I just stood over it, and I just started pouring it down. And I went over there, and I didn't care where it was going, and it was splashing it, bubbling it, taking itself out of the areas I was, I was pouring it into. Then I grab an old board, grab some silver, grab some black, grab my brushes, and I just started working the piece. And I worked it. And that red one there with that black frame, whatever that came later, that piece right there, that signifies to you what the underneath that, what I would call just ugly, boring, just a kindergarten of paint, became the most supporting qualities of that canvas and that piece of art. Because without that, it would not illuminate those bronzes and silvers and those reds that are completely existing and working together in a harmony in that piece on the surface. When you get up close to that piece, when you get into that deep inside of it, and when you get into it, what is behind that piece, and now what she is. Full of feeling, just chunks of texture, chunks of paint, chunks of things working together, chunks getting covered up with other paints, and it's all on that surface, and it's all there. And you can look at it, take as much time as you need, spend all day, yeah, bring a lunch. Yeah. And the way she happened to her, just how quiet she was, I ended up naming her her whisper. Beautiful piece, I never get tired of looking at it. I can look at it every single day. I can spend time looking at it and knowing what she was and what she became. And it's so much of life, and so much of us, and so much of who we are, and so much of just what what is possible. And once again, her whisper is a beautiful example of the creative process, the imagination of the together. The life that she breathes is beautiful. I took that same a five by six full painting, and I just kept the flow going. And I just unleashed, you know, I unleashed the holy hell and paint on that on that piece right there. Yeah, she was just the oranges and the turquoises in that piece and the big. Just, just a surge and surge and just that wine is grapeish, just color of gold all wrapped throughout this really splashing, wild, fun piece. It's 
what happened also in the same evening because the flow is still so available, it's so there, it's still so hungry to, to, to push, the, push the imagination to see what other feelings might actually be there just waiting to happen on the surface of those paintings play themselves out of these beautiful, colorful dramas. Within a matter of hours, another painting was completed in partnership with her whisper. And in fact, I really have never been able to name this piece. I've never really tried to name it. I've been asked to name it. I just never felt comfortable with the name it. Maybe if somebody had sees that piece and you're looking at it now and you think of the name let me know hey, that's, you're not alone and, uh, well this last piece here that I want to discuss which of course is just you know very different piece um, it's it's a dip tech it's, it's It's two, two canvases, they're three feet wide, uh, it's eight feet long, so together it's six by eight foot, and I am, uh, again, there's a nap line, and I had those canvases, you know, I, I built them and I had them ready, and I was thinking, at the end of all of this color and all this porch, I wanted to take all of this color that was being put on this porch, all of this, Surrounds me. That's a gift that my work certainly possesses. You know, you find these moments of taking just the simplest, like two colors you could possibly find. Which, in my my choice, was white and black. Or the other colors are not good shit. I decided to just start just flipping paint around the surfaces, and, and not doing shit about it. Just go wild away. A couple days later, the paint would dry. Perfect. Then I would take black, and I would paint it all black, and then I would drop white on it, let it dry. Again, walk away. I'm not interested. I don't want to know. All I want to do is just white black. So just listen, feel, participate with white and black. And again, work towards that emotional connection. Really, just wait for that moment and to move through your process, pay attention, understand the paint itself, falling, how it's coming off the brush, how it's moving inside the paint bucket itself. Was it loose that day? Did you need to add water to it? Did it stiffen up? You know, was the black plain as well as the white was plain? What was plain better? You know, what looked right? What didn't look right because, you know, I thought it was right. It was what looked right. What looked right. And when I was dripping on top of these things, you know, of course, you know, standing over the surfaces and, you know, pulling the paint out of the, the gallons and just letting it flow over the, over the surface. Um, I became fascinated by each of the layers now they dried and each of the capture of these just fat, really, you know, wide lines, those areas of, of paint that were just, you know, splashed on them. The thinner lines that were revealing something also very cool, but they all tried and there was no you know, changing what the paint wanted to do. So, through the process of back to the rhythms, the harmonies, and like that, um, I found myself you know, beginning to become aware that there's going to be an evening, you know, the moment that comes when I'm going to be ready. And I wanted something to happen that was going to be purely spontaneous, without warning, without understanding, I want to make something to feel.
and you're being and you're creating and as all this is happening the understanding and the knowingness of all of those things that really drive your desires as a painter and how they come to life and you create and you see what what is inside of you what exists all around you what we all have inside of us the possibility to explore do 